From Pune, Brigadier Hemant Mahajan. Uh, from Delhi, Maruf Raza. Former Foreign Secretary Kawal Sibal. D. Raja of the Communist Party of India. My first question is to M. K. Bhadra Kumar, former diplomat. He's joining us from Thiruvananthapuram. Mr. Bhadra Kumar, Nehru had said after the debacle of 1962 that we have been living in an unreal world of our own creation. My question to you, sir, is that by refusing to acknowledge the seriousness of the Chinese threat, as is evident in Ladakh today, are we repeating the same mistake? Well, firstly, I think it's uh, grossly exaggerated to compare what happened in '62 and uh, what is uh, apparently uh, happened here. Uh, 62 was an entirely different uh, 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 subject uh, in the sense that it is related to the border dispute but it's against a different backdrop uh, and uh, Pandit Nehru's uh, statement has to be seen in perspective. Now as far as uh, what is happening here today, I am not speaking on behalf of the government. I am also having the same access uh, to information that you would have in your studio. Now, uh, from what I understand, that uh, you know there are varying perceptions about the line of actual control, and uh, because of these uh, differing perceptions, there are different attitudes to it on both sides, and this has been going on for quite some time. And the incident which we uh, came to know about from uh, April 15 is one such incident. No, sir, this, I would uh, imagine that uh, the description we, of that incident Why are you trying to downplay uh, it, sir? So, uh, Mr. Mr. a Mr. localized affair. No, no, Mr. Bhadra Kumar, it's not a localized affair with the greatest of respect. I'd like to get a second point of view, Kaval Sibbal, in because 16 days after China first pitched tents on our territory, not only have they refused to vacate, they've got in more arms, they've gone and pitched more tents. We are describing it as acne. There is no sign of a let up, is there? I am only talking today, Mr. Sibyl, of the manner in which we are describing it and how the Chinese would see our response. Uh, let Mr. Bhadra Kumar, Kawal Sibyl, come back to you after that. Yes, Mr. Kawal Sibyl. Well, well, you know, a few things that need to be said about what is happening. Uh, if it was a localized affair, then uh, the meetings of the local commanders should have by now ah. settled the matter. If the, if the attitude of the Chinese uh, was the same as ours, that uh, we should not allow this matter to escalate and resolve it very quickly and agree that there are different perceptions of the line of control and that this matter is negotiable, then we would have found a solution. The second thing is that uh, we continue saying repeatedly that there are different perceptions of the line of control. The Chinese never say this. Yeah. And there is a huge gap in how the Chinese look at their claims o o on the border and how we look. We, in fact, implicitly justify what China is doing by describing their incursions as occurring because of different perceptions that both countries have of the line of the control. The Chinese are saying, no, we are on our side of the line yeah, of truly. control. They're very firm on this. They are repeating this. They are not at all apologetic about it. The third thing is that we seem to be far more keen uh, to resolve this issue uh, than the Chinese are. Fourthly, that we have raised the issue ourselves to the political level because our foreign minister has made repeated statements on the matter. Even the Prime Minister has made a statement on the matter. From the Chinese side, only the Chinese spokesman is saying something. So you look at the difference in which, at different levels at which the two sides are dealing with this issue. The and that puts us at a huge disadvantage because our appeals, our sensible comments, our conciliatory gestures at the highest political level are not drawing any... Uh, any, uh, any, uh, any conciliatory response from the Chinese side. They simply, in fact, quote back what we are saying. Yeah, exactly. To our disadvantage by saying, yes, we should, we should talk and we should settle the matter, which means we should settle it in accordance with China's view on where the line of actual control is. So we is. give up 19 kilometers. And by kilometers. talking so much about conciliation, by talking so much about conciliation, resolving it, localized affair, we are, in fact, hampering our own potential action on the ground because we can actually go beyond where they are, go behind the lines and establish ourselves so and then have a bargaining counter. This way we don't even have any bargaining counter. In this, in this case, therefore, among those who say don't escalate the situation is D. Raja of the Communist Party of India. Mr. D. Raja, 
even if one were to accept yes. your contention that let us not escalate the situation, may I ask you and those who are in your group who think that Kamal Sibal and Maruf Raza are too hardline, may I ask you what solution is existing right now? Flag meetings have failed, Chinese are not moving back, they are increasing their presence. May I ask you how one is meant to resolve the situation? Now, firstly, I make it uh, clear, uh, no question of uh, compromising on the territorial integrity of our But country. it is already compromised. I said that, I, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, having said that, I must uh, underline uh, uh, the fact that uh, there can be intrusions or there can be uh, incursions. Whatever may be, no incident should be ignored. It should be taken up seriously. But it should not be blown out of proportion. So how is it being so blown out of proportion? I have been hearing this. No, no, Mr. Right. Raja. That's what I Mr. Was. Raja, I have, I have, I have I been am, hearing I, this now for a week. And, and no, no, I have been hearing no, this no, for a week. To me. There, is a, there is a standard no, argument that me, people are putting. Me. No, no, the pro-China lobby in India yeah, exactly. says, don't blow it out of proportion. I am no, asking no, you, yes. Mr. Raja. No, no, Mr. Raja, I'm asking yes, you, am today if Indian you, troops, you no, no, if, if the Indian army, speak, no, if the Indian no, army, no, Mr. Raja, speak, if, if, Mr. Raja, if one minute, such please. a serious issue. Hello? Can I just ask you, if the Indian army were to go to 19 kilometers on the other side, pitch tents, bring in dogs, increase army presence and carry out intrusions, you think the Chinese would be sitting quiet? I am asking you, so far, Government of India, our government has not made any comprehensive statement on this. If that is such a serious issue... So that is exactly the point. The external Affairs Minister should no. take up the matter with the Government Sir, of China. Sir, our external Affairs Minister, minister should take up the issue with the Ch Government Our external China. Affairs why, Minister why thinks... they are not... No, no, our external Affairs Minister thinks it's like a freckle or acne. He says, apply an ointment, it will be gone. He's downplayed it completely. This is soft diplomacy, sir. No, I think, I, I think government knows better than what I know or you know. Well, I'm not sure. Us, uh, trust our government at least on this issue. Well, you have a lot of trust on the government, the government on this one. You don't trust the government on anything our else. Our territory. You don't trust the government on anything. You only want to trust the government on China. I wonder why. Maruf Raza. No, 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 Mr. No, D. Not, Raja. Not that point. No, 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 let's get the no, four it points. Is not, it to, is not like that. Sir, today we are on a stalemate. No, no, don't simplify that issue. Sir, today we are, we are on a stalemate. Issue between two sovereign nations. Sir, today we are on a stalemate. If, if that is such a serious issue, government of India should sir, take up the. Sir, it's not a serious issue. What Six, sir, it's not a serious issue. It's not a serious issue. Which, which self-respecting country allows another neighboring country to nibble away into its area and then? have a group of people who say it's not a big deal it's a very big deal maruf raza please i want to come i'll come back to you sir or no or no or no let me start from the top it is an established fact and i mean not from now from past several decades and the economist in a recent cover story has alluded to that again and again that at our top level of political leadership we have complete strategic misunderstanding of india's priorities we don't have more than two and a half politicians who can actually articulate how to use india's hard military power so there is always the need to go back especially with this government to the Nehruvian dictum that don't upset the Chinese and they are bogged down with that baggage which has come down for decades. The second aspect is that sovereign issues are always between two countries when it comes to territorial integrity. We have shown in the past when there have allowed military commanders to be assertive, Sundang Chu being a case in point, that we can respond militarily without firing a shot to convey a message to China. Now those that think that China has got military superiority over us on the border, please understand that China is also rubbing its wrong way with countries like Vietnam, countries like Japan, and if it is wanting to also show aggressiveness against India, it is certainly, despite whatever is white paper asking it to be prepared for, doesn't have the capacity to take on three front confrontations. We have to build that into our calculation. The third point I want to bring out in the Dolat Beg Oldie sector, there is a complete disconnect in the command. 
there is half the territory which is to be looked after by ITBP, half by the army. So we have not clarified and this is a very sensitive area because the Chinese are looking to establish a presence there to thereafter take control of the waterways and the glacial region there so that China can get access to the waters which China has been doing even with Pakistan in the Shaksgam Valley when some of the glaciers have been diverted and they have not listened to Pakistan's view after that. And the fourth point I want to bring out is that there are ways that we can actually, if people keep harping it's a localized matter, then why don't we let local commanders take the initiative and show... Is it a localized matter? Please remember, in 15 days, this... Uh, uh, Yes, Arnab, in 15 days, this army liberated Bangladesh. In 15 days, we can't throw 30 Chinese out. It's such a shame because our political leadership lacks the gumption to take a realistic view about what is our what capacity. What is the dilemma the of the border. government? I mean, just because Chinese are intruded. One second, one second. The Let's dilemma get everyone of the in. government is they have no strategic understanding. The question is this, that there is a, there is a 1993 peace pact. There is a 1996 peace pact. And despite that, India is sitting pretty and expecting a diplomatic breakthrough 16 days after the Chinese have blatantly set up camp on our land. My, my question to you, Brigadier Hemant Mahajan, then I'm opening this up. What is holding the government of India back from taking at least a tough diplomatic position? I mean, the diplomatic position of the government of India seems extremely... You know, a candy you, floss a, response. May I just add? No, no, I want to, to get bigger. Diplo you what, have to what back is, diplomacy okay. with military might. You are not, you are dissociating the Effective two. diplomacy. You can't do diplomacy without flexing military muscle. Well, uh, break it up, Okay. Uh, okay, Arnab, I want to first say that the situation now reminds me exactly of what was happening before the 1962 war. Our Prime Minister at that point of time had said that the India does not require army. The police are good enough to take care of our security. There will be no war with China and in the, in the most unlikely event of there being one, I am capable of handling it at a diplomatic level. Today's Prime Minister, Dr. Manmohan Singh, is saying something similar. In those days, the Chinese border was being handled by the foreign ministry. Today also, all the statements on the today's crisis are all coming from uh, the foreign ministry. It should have been the Ministry of Defense which should have been looking after it. The next thing is, we were, uh, uh, the police were manning the borders at that point of time and even here in this area in which Chinese have done lot of incursions, how come we have handed over this area to ITBP which does not even come under the operational command of Indian Army. There seems to be a perception in the government and in among some of the strategic community that the Indian Army is only meant for Republic Day Parade on 26 January and on 15th of August where we uh, say something about what Indian Army can do and thereafter it does nothing. Uh, for, for now we have seen for last 16 days, we have very rightly brought out our response has been, has been totally cowardly. The Chinese have hit us at the right time when they know that our political leadership is completely paralyzed. They know that bureaucracy is totally become non-functional. They know that today in our country we have a set of experts who are Chinese supporter. In fact, there have been a lot of articles which have been appearing which try to say that Indian Army is not capable of a military option. That is 100% wrong. I am aware that there are problems in, of, in terms of infrastructure, in terms I, of road, railways, etc. Is, 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 I yeah. want to ask you one second. The view here is, the view here is that Mr. Badra Kumar, we've got it all wrong. That, that we sh at least should exert ourselves and establish our anger with the Chinese a little bit more effectively. My question to you, sir, Mr. Badra Kumar, is this, that I know that you are among those who, who are for eternal peace with China. So are we. The question is this, that should the foreign minister not be more assertive in expressing our unhappiness and also talking openly of our resolve? After all, he's dealing with a, you know, with, with a government in China which says we will uphold our sovereignty and territorial integrity at any cost. That's what the new leadership in China is all about. You see, you see, firstly, let me object to you know, your description of that you know, somebody is you know, being apologizing for China. 
Now, you know, you wouldn't like it if I say that, you know, you take money from the CIA and conduct this kind of programs. It's very easy to call names, Mr. Goswami. Let's stop that. Mr. Stop it, you know, it's Mr. unethical. Mr. Badra Kumar, now, the do point you is, you have, no right, you have no right to say do you that you are a nationalist and you are a patriot and I'm do, a traitor. Do you, do you, do you have you, no right to say that. Mr. Badra Kumar, and if I call you a petty American agent, how do you take it? Mr. I will take you to as much amusement as you are saying it right now. <laughs> My question, yes, that's what I'm saying. My that's question to you, sir, is, is your anger reserved? Is your anger reserved only at me? What about the Chinese? Why does your yes, anger disappear when we ask you tough let's, questions let's, of the let's Chinese? Say no. now and let's by the way, Mr. Badra Kumar, by the way, Mr. Badra Kumar, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. That you are, I have never called you an apologist. Maybe it is in your mind that somebody called you an apologist. I challenge you tonight to tell me who on the program just called you an apologist. You just know you who called you an remark. apologist? Who called you an just apologist? Know you made a who remark. called you an apologist? Who called you an apologist? I've taken a lot of your bullshitting. Mr. Badra you know, your Kumar, full of bullshitting. Mr. Bullshitting Badra people. Kumar, Mr. Now, Badra I Kumar, Russian, one minute. And if I know scuba Calm diving, down. I say that tomorrow I'd like to Calm be the commander down. of Admiral Goshko. Calm you down. laugh at me. Calm down, Mr. Badra. And you know, the point is, Mr. Badra Kumar, first of all, and First you know, of you all, just one throw second. Out words and say, you know, no, no, this will is you calm down? Policy, this is what will you calm means. down? I came on your channel today precisely yes. to tell you a few things straight on your face. Well, Mr. Badra that Kumar, the problem is... you are doing colossal damage to the country's yeah. national interest. Mr. Badra Kumar... You are, you know, by conducting a theater like this, yeah, yeah. at prime, on primetime TV, Mr. you are actually Badra. doing a colossal damage to the country's interest. Mr. Badra you Kumar... You should back up and, you know, Thank start you. an advertising agency. M Mr. Badra Kumar, I want to just tell you one thing and now I request you to please keep quiet and listen. You see, the problem with you, Mr. Bhadra Kumar, is that you attempt there to... There is no problem with Listen, me, Mr. Mr. Bhadra Kumar, there is a take huge problem. I not and I am not pushing anything at this time. Mr. Bhadra Kumar, home, why are you then, if you, if you, if you are not an apologist, if you are not an apologist, then why are you getting worked up when people are talking about apologists? If you are not an apologist, because then why are you defending you know, you're apologists? Such a third to say, I put you know, that question to Maruf Raza. Maruf me. wanted to come back and to you. You, you are looking so badly on the defensive to tonight, Mr. Badra Kumar. Mr. Badra Kumar, Mr. Badra Kumar, you are looking so terribly on the defensive. I request you, you are exposing yourself. You are on national television. Don't expose yourself further. Maruf Raza is responding to you. Maruf, Maruf wants to respond to you. One minute, Mr. Badra Kumar, please. Don't expose yourself, Mr. Badra Kumar. Mr. Badra Kumar, sir. Mr. Badu Kumar, sir, with full respects to your view, when the term apologist is used, if I could just give a little, you know, elaboration on that, is when a particular point of view is against the national mood, which is the case now, there are more people who feel that we are not taking any action against the Chinese when we have the capacity to at least make some maneuvers on the ground to convey our assertion that this territory certainly doesn't belong to Chinese as the respected foreign secretary has also brought out that it's not now but traditionally we have been very very defensive when dealing with the Chinese at our highest political level statements are being made okay. whereas uh, in the Chinese the only spokesperson Rasa, is coming out and addressing the issue yeah. so the pointed I, issue sir, one minute sir, Mr. Badrakum Please let me complete, sir. Yeah. Please let me complete. So, sir, so the point, the point really of debate today is that are we doing enough or are we just letting it wait it pass so that it will the storm will blow over now we have shown in the past we have the capacity we are also aware of a chinese tradition of nibbling away into territory we are also aware that so many years of talks with the chinese have not led to any further movement on the border you have served with the foreign office would you now be able to educate us that there is an understanding in the foreign office that the area of akshay Chin is a barter with the Chinese when it comes to Chinese not disturbing the established Indian presence in Arunachal. Yeah. So we let sleeping dogs lie there and Chinese have decided to encroach further. It is part of China's strategic plan to establish a greater presence there so that they dominate the Nubra Valley, they dominate the Shakskam Valley, they are not happy with our military presence in Dolat Bay Goldie, the revival of old airfields, India really establishing a new core which was 
Chinese are seeing as offensive when they are doing air land battle exercises in the Tibetan plateau. Right. All that put together. Are we still of the view that relations with China are honky dory? Please answer these questions. Well, the question sir. here is this. I'd like to go back at this point to Kawal Sibal. Uh, Mr. Kawal Sibal, Mr. Kawal Sibal, India and China, India and China, Mr. Kawal Sibal. Mr. Goswami to step aside, I can explain to you. Mr. Badra Kumar, I assure you, you've just said a lot. Allow others to come in. Let them also have their say. Can I let Mr. Kamal Sibal have his say or would you like to speak on his behalf as well? Mr. Kamal Sibal, the question is this, that India and no, China have Mr. signed Raza four agreements. Some sensible questions and I would like to explain. <laughs> Mr. Badra Kumar, please cool down. Understand, you felt somebody called you an apologist. Unless you are an apologist, you don't need to defend all apologists. The question is this to Mr. Kamal Sibal. India uh, and China have just, signed Mr. four Gosami. agreements in 1993, 1996, 2005 and 2012 to deal with the border dispute. The two countries, Mr. Sibyl, have also in 2003 created a new institution of the special representative level dialogue to address the border issues. Question is this, Mr. Sibyl, despite all this, why this level of aggression and intrusion that we are experiencing now? What is the strategy in this? Well, first, uh, uh, I think what has happened in Ladakh uh, is uh, connected to what is happening in South China Sea and East China Sea. Uh, when countries like China, or for that matter, any country, uh, when they look at uh, their territorial disputes and their relations with neighbor, uh, they don't have uh, a different policies towards uh, uh, one uh, set of issues, another set of issues, if they are territorial. They have to have a consistent view. And you were right in earlier saying, that the new Chinese leadership has very emphatically said that they will not give up China's territorial sovereignty at any cost. But I think the issue in this case is that uh, a few facts are known. One, our, in the parliament, uh, our government has said that the Chinese have intruded 19 kilometers inside what we consider is our line of actual control. Uh, they have a, for the first time, as I understand from my conversations uh, with people, actually put some fixtures there, settle down, put up tents. Earlier on, they have been patrolling, yes. but going back. We have been patrolling, but going back. But the moment that they have set up tent, what they are conveying is that it is no longer a question of differing perceptions of line of control. They have asserted their control, and they are saying this is, they are on their side of the line of control, which means there is no room left for negotiations. Now, therefore, I can't see how they are going to withdraw if they are saying that this is behind their lines of, line of actual control. And therefore, our appeals to them at the political level to withdraw uh, will not be very effective unless at the same time we have some bargaining chip. And the obvious bargaining chip is that we go a few miles inside what we consider is the line of actual control where we have not, we have patrolled, but we have not put up any fixture. Therefore, let us put up a fixture there ah. behind the Chinese line. Uh, and then we have a bargaining chip and then at the, the political level you can talk. M Mr. Otherwise, Raja. Uh, we, are being, we are looking as if we are pleading with them. Yeah. We are appealing to them. Please, for heaven's sake, get this out of the way. Uh, the foreign minister wants to visit. We want the Chinese prime minister to come here. This issue must be resolved. We are playing out. We are giving away all our diplomatic cards and giving the entire initiative to the Chinese to decide what they want to do, when they want to do. And if ultimately they do something, it will look as if they have done a great favor to India. They have shown great gesture of goodwill, etc., etc., and cramping us further in, in anything that we may do in terms of protecting our border interests, because then we will look as if we are provoking them, whereas they have well, shown the, statesmen like it's a, sense of uh, self-control and, uh, and uh, generosity and stuff like that. It's a sensible point. A, it's, a it's kind a, of diplomacy which helps us and therefore if we do something on the ground it does not mean we are blowing it out of proportion we are simply defending our rights it's and a we sense, should do that it's a sensible position i'd like to get mr d raja what do you Honor, think about that diplom one second Honor, just one quick point uh, yes maruf actually i just want to get mr raja and then i'll come back to you one, mr one mr raja point, I'd, I'd, mr, oh, oh, mr. Yes, raja on, on a one quick point Ma Maruf, one minute, please. Let me just speak to Mr. Raja. I'll come back to you. Mr. Raja, a suggestion made by Kamal Sibal right. here that you conduct diplomacy as equals. So if they have a slight edge in terms of a territorial incursion, he feels it is appropriate, valid for India at this point of time to also take a few liberties with the Chinese side and then we can resolve the matter as equals. Not in an apologetic manner than some people are suggesting. Mr. Raja. 
Arnab, at the outset I made it clear, no compromise on our territorial integrity. I hope the External Affairs Minister, Mr. Salman Khrushchev, Defence Minister, Mr. A.K. Antony, are listening to you and to the views expressed by Mr. Sibyl. And if that is such a serious situation, the government should have acted already. Why government is not acting? So there is something we should try to understand. Whipping up emotions and calling for some military confrontation, military war at this point of time, is it proper? Both countries are trying to sort out their border disputes. As you said, you yourself said the talks are at a higher level. And we wish the talks must end. No, I don't think Mr. I don't think Mr. Sibal is pushing for a military option. I'd like him to clear. I don't think he's saying he's saying aggressive diplomacy. No, no, no. He's saying aggressive and tactful diplomacy. One second, Mr. Sibal. Mr. Sibal, let Mr. Sibal respond to you. India must improve its relationship with our neighboring countries. The Chinese already the Indo-Chinese relationship is improving. And nothing should be blown out of proportion. No, no, Mr. Sibyl wants to. Which can Mr. Sibyl, let me clarify. Between our two countries, which let can create strains in our relationship. That is what I am trying to say. Mr. Sibyl, both countries cannot afford to go for a war. That's what I am saying. We should believe in. No, no, nobody. I don't think. I don't think. You see that nobody is looking at an extreme situation of war. One is talking of aggressive yet tactful diplomacy. I'd let Mr. Sibyl respond for himself. No, two two things are now. Why is it that we bear upon our burdens the entire, on our shoulders the entire burden of looking statesmanlike, wanting peace, wanting tranquility, uh, etc., etc.? Why don't the Chinese side make some statements of this kind? Uh, we haven't heard the Chinese leader say, say anything of the sort, but let's leave that aside. Now the Chinese have come in 19 kilometers, as we say, inside our territory and pitched their tents there. We don't have to confront them. We outflank them and go behind that and set up our tent and also supply them as in whatever we, we, we can. Now, we are not evicting the Chinese from their tents by force. Let's see if the Chinese take the step to evict our people who may be stationed a few kilometers behind them by force. Now, if they do that, then the Chinese will be taking the first step to resolve this issue contrary to the 1993 and 1996 agreements by force where the protocols are that the patrols will not come face to face, they will not clash. Let the Chinese do that. By merely going behind the lines and setting up something in what we okay. think is our territory is not provocation. Ma Maruf, it's not blowing anything out of proportion. I think that, I think that, that, that that's a... any military step in order to force the issue in terms of that's any a... shooting or any physical no, conflict. I think that's a solid clarification. Maruf wanted to come in before I wrap this up. Maruf. Uh, or, or quickly, one is that Mr. Raja referred to improved relations with China. Improved relations with China has only given it a two-third two advantage in the Indian market by trading with benefit to China, not trade benefits to us. Secondly, we've had 15 rounds of border talks, and even all border maps are not being accepted by China, only the middle sector is accepted. Third is military conflicts don't take place just out of the blue. There is maneuver, move, counter moves that take place. As Mr. Sibyl is rightly pointing out you can make a certain move in a couple yeah. of directions and then see how they respond and remember even in 1967 in Nathula there was a full-fledged shootout between Indian troops and Chinese troops on that part of the border it still didn't lead to a full-fledged Indochina war like in 1962 but one battalion and later on under General Sagat Singh the whole division hammered the hell out of the Chinese and they withdrew back from there. So the fact is you can have a localized conflict to think that even during Kargil the world was saying that India Pakistan are fighting and they're two nuclear neighbors and they'll go to a nuclear conflict. The advantage of being nuclear neighbors is that it gives you strategic space to fight short, sharp conflicts if your territorial integrity is threatened. And in this case it is. So we should be prepared for a short skirmish. Well, with right now we are to told... It's not going to be a war, but it will teach the Chinese a lesson. Well, right now, with all kinds of solutions, right now we are told there's another flag meeting that could be expected between China and India tomorrow. We follow that and we still hope even at this stage that the Chinese will see sense and probably retreat. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining me on debate number two on the news hour tonight.